Continuing our conversation on AI, there's a new letter by several tech industry leaders that warns artificial intelligence could lead to global annihilation. This comes as AI evolves and starts to play roles in the classroom, the office, mm -hmm. finances, which is why we brought in business editor and certified financial planner Rod Maloney to really take a closer look at this. That's right. And this morning, we're hearing from one company that's entrusting the software with investing money and making significant returns. And we're joined by uh, Global Predictions co-founder and head of quantitative economics, Reed Hartman. Reed, good morning. Hi, how are you? Hi. Thanks for having me. Good to have you with us. Uh, we did want to start. Do you have any reaction to what we heard from tech leaders uh, just about this warning with AI and the major concerns of it just on a global basis? Absolutely. Um, you know, AI is an amazing technology. Um, and I think that a lot of the discourse around it is a little bit overblown at this point, just in terms of how damaging it could be, uh, you know, societally, in terms of replacing jobs and things like that. But there's a lot of issues that I think we're going to start encountering, encountering very shortly. Um, things like, you know, proliferating misinformation um, and other issues that I think will come along before that happens. Can you talk a little bit about how it is that you intend to use it? In other words, um, what it does essentially is that it speeds up the analysis process. But are you looking for people to put more of their portfolios in with you because you're AI? Not necessarily. So we, um, I think we're, we're thinking about AI for the time being uh, as the interface uh, for sound financial analysis. So. What we'd really caution people against, and I think you know a lot of the stuff you see in the news that I think is misguided, is around sort of turning over your investment process or your portfolio to something like ChatGPT or another one of these large language models. Um, and there's a lot of issues. I think some some are short term, some are more structural. Um, you know, short term you have things like a hard data cut, cut off, uh, some limited memory, um, and sort of the phenomenon where an AI will hallucinate and sort of give you answers that. Uh, you know, where it doesn't have good answers, uh, which is quite, you know, damaging, especially if you don't know that much about investing, um, because you won't necessarily be able to tell that the information you're getting is not valid. Um, and then structurally, uh, these models are trained on a lot of data from all over the internet of varying quality, particularly as it, you know, um, particularly as it pertains to investing. And, uh, you know, it's supposed to generate plausible probabilistic outcomes but they're not drawing from any sort of economically viable view of the world. So what we think and what we think the short term path is for using AI is that it's more like a management admin. So it can take it's a, it's a great interface for interacting with people that, um, you know, want to use chat or want to ask sort of unstructured, broad questions. Um, the AI can then take that um, and then translate that into things that computers can understand. So API calls or different queries against good sound financial models. Um, and so the system that we're building basically works that way, where we allow the AI to interface with the user, but all of the actual investment calculations and modeling and advice are handled in sort of a more traditional financial fashion, uh, where we can actually understand and safeguard the outputs. Let me ask this question. The whole part of AI um, changes the game, but it's all looking in the rear view mirror. The whole question becomes, uh, what about the black swan event, as they call it in the marketplace? In other words, uh, you know, the unpredictable thing that you can't see coming, uh, AI isn't going to be, see, be able to see any more than any regular analyst would. So what do you say to investors as, as they consider this, that whole notion of well, just because it happened yesterday doesn't mean it's going to happen tomorrow? Yeah, absolutely. I think we have the same issue when we're using computers like in, in quant hedge funds and such like that where I used to work. And when we're making decisions discretionarily, which is that we draw a lot from past That's experience. And so anytime you're dealing with uh, making financial decisions, particularly if they involve projections, it's hard to think about the unknowns that could be out there. Um, and so I think computers and humans both have failings, you know, that fall along those lines. Um, one of the things that you can do is you can model a lot of uncertainty um, and you can vary a lot of inputs when you're making projections. Um, and I think that's really the core of portfolio management is making sure that, you know, you're not putting too much emphasis on one particular outcome and that you're hedging your risks and you're making sure that you you know kind of 
how bad things would be in a worst case scenario. And so that's a lot of the type of analysis that we try to bubble up as well, uh, because nobody has a crystal ball. And you know, even, even people who do this for a living have a hard time trying to figure out what the next black swan event is going to be. So your portfolio pilot, who is it for? I mean, Rod is a certified financial planner. <laughs> yeah. I am the, you know, I'm the person who relies on someone like Rod mm -hmm. to be a human being, to, to, to analyze all this data for me, all this science, mm -hmm. but be a real person to talk me through my own personal situation. So is this for somebody that's more skilled or is it for a layman that, like me? Yeah, so we we've designed it to be, um, you know, kind of like a little bit of an iceberg. So, you know, if you if you just kind of show up, you'll sort of see the, the tip there. Um, and if you're, um, you know, a less sophisticated investor, maybe that's all that you interact with. Right. And so you just get the high level summary. Um, you know, here's what we think that you need to do here. Are the risk you should be aware of. Here's the range of outcomes that you could be seeing um, in the future. Um, but if you want to dig in, there's a whole lot of analysis and financial modeling underneath the surface. Um, and so. I think when we think about our target um, consumer or target user, um, it's somebody that wants to be in control. That's something that these different um, archetypes sort of have in common. Um, they want to know what's going on in their investments, but we're happy to take people at sort of any, any level of their financial literacy uh, path. I would like to say one last thing uh, because we're going to be wrapping it up here, but, but one thing that people watching should remember is diversification. It's a new and interesting technology. Maybe you want to dip your toe in that water, but putting everything in that one basket is a bad idea. Mm -hmm. Well, Rod, we appreciate you coming in <laughs> um, to have your perspective on this. And also, Reed, uh, thank you so much for joining us as well and explaining to us this portfolio pilot and, and who it might be best for. Appreciate it.